Introducing ZBrush Core. <laughs> uh, so for those that don't know, we've already made the announcement about this, that we have a new version of ZBrush, which is ZBrush Core. So we're going to go through some of the stuff in Core, and we're going to open it up and show you to what it's about and give you some more information. So the first slide will give you on our little basic understanding. So we're taking a look at ZBrush and what is the core that makes ZBrush what it is today. And so we've streamlined that to make the ZBrush core. So in the next slide, highlight some of the stuff that's going to be in the ZBrush core for, for all you, for your purchasing pleasures. So <laughs> obviously we have, our, we have our Dynamesh, we have subdivision level surfaces, we got the brush system. So it's really about the stuff that's the core part of what makes the ZBrush Pro version. So now we have a ZBrush Core version. So our next slide is also looking at what kind of users we're thinking about that would want to make this step into a 3D application, something like ZBrush. So we're creating that next step for people that, hey, I've, I've always wanted to use ZBrush, but I'm not sure. So this application is going to be a great stepping stone for a lot of these artists, jewelers, toy makers, concept artists, illustrators. So. We're pretty excited about this. We're really looking forward to seeing what people start doing with the ZBrush Core. So moving along, okay, what can you do with the ZBrush Core, of course? So we've had some uh, beta testers already playing with this and using this, and it's been uh, pretty awesome to see what they've been making. So Russ, my friend, is the next slide is some work that's actually been done in the ZBrush Core, so you guys get an idea of what some of the testers can do. So you can see that high fidelity. I know it's not Square Enix, but... Uh... <laughs> Lou, that's precision. <laughs> Every time my students ask me, what can you do? I'm like, just sculpt, man. Just sculpt, sculpt, sculpt. You know, don't try to find the quick shortcut. Sorry, I'm going on a tangent. I didn't see that. Yeah, we, oh, you didn't see it? No, you go you ahead. You can't read anymore? No. Oh. Go ahead to the next slide, show them. Uh, it just says you got something in your teeth. Uh, okay, yeah. 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 Sorry. Oh, um, we're dropping stuff. Show them the next slide. Some more work. Thank you. So this is an example of just using some subdivision, um, subdivision surfaces with the subtools. So you'll have both those available to you in the, in the ZBrush core. Then obviously Z spheres is going to be there. Poly paint is going to be there. Those are some core features of ZBrush, of course. Then uh, some great characters with Dynamesh and poly painting. We actually are going to have a great video of all these transitioning from one to another. So it's going to be pretty awesome to check out. Next one. Then you got uh, a little bit of some hard surface with insert mesh brushes. So you guys might have recognized this maybe. I don't know. No, I never. This one never no. went out. I don't, I don't get a name tag Did, on this one, though. You don't. No. Uh, this was one of Druss <laughs> ones that he's done So in the core. So he's been having some fun playing with some insert mesh brushing and a uh, hard surface with some poly painting, of course, as well. So you want to go to the next slide, sir? Oh, oh, oh or whoa, no, whoa, whoa, there you go. Whoa, no one saw So anything. this is Chad. Chad, are you here still? There he is, my man Chad right there. So Chad was part of the beta team, so he made this little uh, crab creature in the core and sent it to Keyshot. So you will have the bridge capability to go to Keyshot within the ZBrush core. So that's a pretty exciting addition. The next slide, sir, is going to be uh, learning about the ZBrush core. So we have an extensive number of videos that we've been creating for you or for when we launch. So the website is already live. So you will be able to go right now and see all this stuff I'm talking about on our website. So we've uh, made quite a few. I think we're at like almost 30 or something like that. We got a lot. And then we're, I don't know. We're it's still, a big blur some are still with the Summit too. core yeah. and some other stuff that we might be showing. I don't know, maybe. So uh, I think we're around there. We're around there, 30 videos, maybe more. So please check that out you know, and see what videos we have. So next slide, sir. Say multiple language support. <laughs> Apparently everyone speaks English here and that's not that big of a deal. <laughs> but this is big, you know, for people that have wanted to pick up ZBrush, having that language barrier has been uh, something of a learning curve. So these are the languages that we will be supporting in the core. So you'll be able to select which language you want, and then there you'll have that uh, language support. So we got six already. So next slide, sir, please. 
So we have also done an exclusive uh, package with Wacom or Wacom, which it, or Wacom, Wacom, Wacom. We've got the actual way to say it now. I've been saying it Wacom. all wrong all day, all day, all wrong. Oh, Louie, can you throw me that purple box right there, please, real quick? Can you make it? <laughs> people want to go home, Louie. <laughs> and when I say people, me eventually. Okay. Thank you. All right, so here's what you can actually going to be able to purchase, and we're going to let you know when you can purchase this. So we've worked with Wacom to create a package where you can get a tablet and the core together in one package. Yeah. <laughs> so this will be your Intuos, Intuos 3D package. So it'll be a great stepping stone for all, any, you, anybody that doesn't have a tablet and get the package. So, we wanted to also make sure you all knew about that as well. And we are, we're excited about that relationship with Wacom. I'm probably saying it wrong again because I'm going my old school ways. Was it good? God, I feel good <laughs> about that. I feel good about that. I all still right. have a chance to say it right. What do you usually say? Wacom. Wacom, see, Wacom. Yeah. All right, so we wanted to let you know about that. We're super excited. We'll, in a couple slides, we'll be giving a little more information about things as well. So go ahead, next slide, sir. Mm -hmm. Minimax, all right. So, Mr. Druss, do you want to take it away and share some things here? All right. So, I'm just going to do a little quick demo of the core. So, some of you guys that are watching may not be familiar with ZBrush. So, I just want to go through the process, and you guys can see what we've kept with the core version here, and just go through a, a simple little uh, demo here. So, when you start ZBrush Core, we've thought about you know what kind of stuff would someone want to create with ZBrush Core. So we've created a lot of different assets and projects that are shipped with the product. So if we come here, we have a bunch of head planes, and these are all set up in DynaMesh mode already. So you can just quickly come through, select brushes that are already visible in the UI, and just come through and start sculpting. And since this sculpting is one of the core elements of ZBrush here, we wanted to make this transition to get to this stage as fast as possible. So we've ended up doing a lot of these kind of projects and things like that that can get you opening the software and right in and sculpting instantly. Now, in addition to this, we also have other projects, uh, projects related to 3D printing. We even have worked with Wacom. 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 To, uh, Wacom. I got you. Don't worry. <laughs> they gave us their plans for their uh, pens. So we have project files here that will allow you to even create your own custom pen holders. So you can launch these, sculpt on them, print them right out. They're going to be at the correct size. You're going to take those, and now you can store your favorite pen device in your own custom holders. So all sorts of uh, projects like that inside as well. And we've added things. We've kept things as well, such as files for more 3D printing stuff, for making key change, key rings, all those different assets, Z-spheres. We've added some various shapes for creating jewelry. And then we've also kept the mannequin functionality as well. And so I'm just going to go through a process now with a mannequin here and show you guys some of the changes here. So first of all, these are mannequins. And if you're not familiar with ZBrush, mannequins allows you to pose a model in ZBrush here very quickly. So we can come through and use any of these move, scale, and rotate options here and click on our models in different views and just kind of deform the surfaces here. So I can change the frog's head here, move things down, move the eyes, and just have fun with it. And this is more back to the kind of exploration and design process that you can reach with ZBrush Core. So bridging the gap of what you have in your head to reality. And we're hoping that... That's a big bridge. <laughs> For me, yeah. that's a big bridge. Well, it's a lot of empty space. I don't know if it's a bridge. Ooh, oh. burnt. Oh. And we work together. <laughs> Not anymore. <clears throat> so... If you've used you know, any of the mannequin stuff before, you know that you can convert your model to a polymesh preview. We've added the ability that this will now allow for DynaMesh. So you're seeing your model here in a DynaMesh format. So now I come down here and select any of the clay brushes, change your size here, and you can start quickly coming through and sculpting on your model. Now, we know that the process of converting a mannequin is sometimes a little bit interesting when getting it to a sculptable model. So we've added some additional options here to allow this transition to happen a little more seamlessly. 
So at any point, if you disactivate the preview now in ZBrush Core or hit A, it gives you the option to create a poly mesh, discard changes, or stay where you are. So this is a fail safe now for the, the feature here. So I'm going to go through and just create a poly mesh out of this. And now I have a new version of the frog. And this is a poly mesh object, which I can just freely sculpt on now. Now, with this, we can also come through and use any of our brushes. So we've included quite a bit of brushes that ship with the full version of ZBrush. And these are the ones that uh, you know, we find that most users use. So we've kept you know, the DAM standard brush, the clay brush, the H-Polish. We've also included things like the IMM model kit and IMM primitives. So you can kind of get a little taste of the full version with ZBrush Core. And as you saw from our previous slides here, we're able to create a lot of different uh, assets with this. So let's say I have my frog here, and I'm going to come through and just you know, describe some areas where I want the eyes to be here. So just sculpt these in real quick. Just make a little indention here. And let's say I want to add an eye now. So I'm going to go to my subtool palette and just append in a sphere. Well, if you guys have you know, been used to ZBrush, you'll get something like this. And now you have to scale your sphere here to fit where it needs to go on your model. Well, with ZBrush Core, we want it to be easier. You know, have functionality that's easy for the people that are transitioning from 2D world or from other applications into 3D. So if we come up here and now select the move object option, we now have a universal gizmo gyro. You're welcome. You're welcome. I love it. The 3D, 3D gyro just gets a round of applause <laughs> excitement. I love you. You're welcome. <clears throat> now, from here now, we can quickly scale our meshes. Uh, 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 do, do you want to, we're we're, we're really done. <laughs> welcome to the summit. Dress, go out on a high note, dude. Go out on a high note. That's it. That's it. That's the highlight um, for this. So we can scale our things here. We can also move and position these in space. So now you can just come in and quickly position your models like so. We also have screen space moves, rotations, gyro baby. <laughs> this also works with any of the additional functionalities that is in ZBrush. So I can take the eyeball here, here. I can go to the geometry tab and go to Modify Topology and do a mirror and weld, and now my frog has two eyeballs. So easier use to get things done that you have in your mind. So yeah, process nice. there. Now with this, we've also kept things like surface noise as well. So if we go to our surface noise tab here with our frog, we've added a whole bunch of more options for surface noise inside of ZBrush Core. Because this is one of the things that we find that starting users like to experiment and play with. So you know, mm -hmm. stitching a noise on your model, and it's going to update across your entire mesh. So we've included a wide range of these. So if we come here and just double click on these, you're going to get that loaded on your mesh there. So now we've got a little green frog. That's there. pretty. We can go back to noise maker here and just to select another noise, just simply click on it, and it's going to apply it to the mesh like so. We've also kept all the different materials that ZBrush has. So say I want to take his eyes now and go back to his eye subtool here. I can select a new material. So let's go here and select this toy plastic. I'm going to fill this with a black color for the object here. And now I can go back to my MatCab Gray. And so now I have shiny eyes. So we've kept the material principles and properties that are inside of the full version in the core as well. So you can experiment with different matte caps and textures to get different results out of the mesh. Now, in addition to just applying the surface noise, you still have all the attributes of modifying these as well, if I select my correct subtool here. So we can come to our surface palette here and edit these. And we can now manipulate our surface noises like we would normally. So we can change our strength. We can change the scale of the noise. So all this functionality is still inside of ZBrush Core. Now, another thing that we want to do, rather than just taking ZBrush Core and allowing you to generate images, we know that the 3D printing stuff is big. So I'm going to take this mesh here, and I'm just going to divide them up and just apply this noise to the surface here. Now, 3D printing, to get a model to 3D print, can sometimes be complex. And so we wanted to automate that process and make it a little bit easier. So if I go ever get up here to the File menu, we've added some optimized options for 3D printing. 
This optimized menu here is going to allow you to click one single button. It's going to optimize your mesh and allow you to export to an STL or a VRML. Now, if you export to the VRML, you're going to be able to hold the color that we just applied to the frog like so. They're not excited. They're not excited. Well, but look. Show but look. The, just show, show the gyro. Gyro! <laughs> you know what? Should we even tell him what you can do with the gyro, too? Besides? No. No? No. All right. He wants to stay no. there. Sorry. Mm -hmm. No. That's it. That's all they're getting. Now, we're going back to slides. All right. <laughs> you need I to tried. Talk. You Sorry. need to talk for a little bit here. All right. I don't know where you put the slides. Yep. Go for it. Let's hope this works. All right, we're going to go through these quick. All right, so there you go. Keep going through. They've seen all. Oh, we this. have. You're going to get a recap. Fast forward. But look, look at this. Pretty it's beautiful. Amazing. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. You try not to go too fast. Yes. Ready? Are we yes, ready? Me. Okay, so there's your price. Can you connect to ZBrushCore.com? The website ZBrushCore.com. Not Melissa. ZBrushCore.com. And... We're not, we're not done there. We're not done there, though. So, yes, we want, obviously, this to be a nice stepping stone for those artists that we previously mentioned. So this is going to be $149.95. The, the Wacom bundle is going to be $199.95. I like that we actually put applause here in the, in the slide. That's a nice touch with a star. That's to remind you to yes. clap. <laughs> Okay. You never Sorry. clap, Paul. So, besides this $149.95, why don't you show them what's on the next slide, my good friend. Uh, when's it going to become available? So, October 14th is when you're going to be able to purchase the ZBrush Core and the Wacom ZBrush 3D Intuist Bundle. So addresses, just want to show you guys the website, which is the ZBrush Core website that's already up. So you can go here. Chad, you're becoming a star man. <laughs> you better get a pen out at this summit and start signing stuff. So here are some great sculpts, some great things, the stuff we were previously talking about as well, the videos that are already up. So we encourage you to definitely check that out tonight at your hotel or wherever you're staying, the Airbnb. You know, have, have some fun, and we're looking forward to that. There's your ring, Russ. It is All my right. ring. So, we're not just doing that, though. We're not just saying $149.95. We're not just saying when it's available. We're also doing something else. So we're going to give you 20% off. <laughs> so you're going to definitely want to get on that discount, because that discount's only going to be good until October 14th. So you got two weeks to take advantage of that 20% 20, 20 off, okay? So you're going to definitely want to get on that. So for a limited time, you're gonna do, we're going to do pre-orders. So when that day comes, October 14th, you'll be able to actually get the version and download it. But the sale is only for these next two weeks. So there you go, 20% off, huh? 